Is today is April 7th and it is day 32 of the stock market crash 2020. So today, a very interesting day. This morning, stocks started strong out of the gate, but they haven't gi they have given back most of the gains for today. So we'll take a look at the stock market. Well, let's take a look at crude oil because crude oil has been in the news recently. And today, crude oil is down again, more than 7%, almost 8%. Uh, then the news that we got today is that uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, wants another $1 trillion uh, in additional financial stimulus. So this was the breaking news today. And what I want to show you today is how to calculate the best stop for trading stocks so that you can make sure that you never risk more than you should and that you could protect your account from devastating losses. So. Let's get started. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the markets first and see what is happening here. So uh, let me just move this out of the way really quick. Good to see everybody. As you can see, the Dow right now up still 0.27%, but it is about to turn negative here right now. Uh, let me just see. There's something still going on in the background here that I want to move out of the way. What do I have behind here? Ah, okay, your questions. We'll get to your questions here in just a moment. All right, so let's take a look at what happened here throughout the day. Let's switch to a five minute chart. And as you can see, the Dow this morning, strong out of the gate, up almost 3%, but now we are trading at session lows here. So we are experiencing a pullback. Yesterday we talked about it. We are at a critical level here right now because we do have some resistance. Let me just draw it here really quick. So we do have some resistance here and this morning it looked like we break through resistance and hey, we are good to go. But right now it seems that we are dropping right back into this resistance level. We're getting close to yesterday's closing price and this is pretty dangerous. So what is causing today's rally and why the pullback right now? Well, this morning again, uh, it seems that we have reached the, the peak, uh, but then it seems reality is setting in that ugh might not be there and it might actually take a while until we see that the economy recovers here. So this is why we heard that there's a, an additional one trillion dollars uh, that is supposed to be available uh, in financial stimulus, probably to be signed into into a bill by the end of the month. And today is April 7th. So it'll be a while <clears throat> now. Looking at uh, crude oil here, you see crude oil last week was rallying because at first there were rumors that uh, <clears throat> that Saudi Arabia and Russia might sit down on a table and agree to production cuts. But now the, the news is probably not until the end of this week. So again, buy the rumor, sell the fact crude oil down again, uh, almost 8 percent, 7.3 percent And this. Most stocks are just out of the gate. Uh, American Airlines, surprisingly today, the airlines were slightly up, but you see pulling back here as well. I uh, didn't see anything really jumping out. Um, the cruise lines are slightly up, but hey, it's easy to be up. Uh, let me just go to Carnival. Saw this earlier. It's easy to be up 10% when you're only trading at $10 because it's only a dollar here. So <clears throat> anyhow, this morning I was, uh, let me come back to you here just full screen for a moment. So this morning I was looking for opportunities to sell some more puts. But since the markets were up, I didn't see really much that excites me. So right now I'm pretty light in my portfolio. I still have two puts uh, that I have on here that expire uh, one at the end of the week, the other one next week. I'm looking for opportunities. But what we want to see is that the market retraces. Now you have seen the email from me. Probably tomorrow is the big day. So tomorrow we will have the options class. I know that many of you were interested in trading options. So that is happening tomorrow right here on YouTube. If you haven't registered for it yet. <clears throat> So if you if you haven't registered uh, for it yet, go to rockwelltrading.com slash options. This way I'll send you a reminder. But uh, when you hit on subscribe and hit the, the, the little notification bell. <laughs> OK, so this means that YouTube will send you a reminder, too. So tomorrow we're going to talk about options. Today, I want to show you how to best calculate a stop loss 
when you are trading stocks because I'm receiving emails right now that are kind of scary. Let me remove the ticker here for a moment. Um, you see, this is where uh, I receive a lot of questions and emails. And if you have a question for me, go to askmarcus.com. I'm going to show you right now one of the questions that I received that I want to answer here today. <clears throat> I'm going to share the desktop for a moment. So here is uh, one of the questions that you ask. Do you recommend using the average daily range to set your stop loss or the 2% rule? And if you say right now, what the heck are you talking about? That's what I want to explain right now uh, in detail. Let me just prepare a few things so that we can get started. I also want to make sure you all can hear me and see me just fine. Because uh, a little bit earlier I heard that uh, it was buffering for some of you. And as you know, right now the internet is stressed because everybody is working from home. Kids are learning from home, right? So everybody is online right now. People that uh, that usually wouldn't use that much bandwidth. Um, so it can be that YouTube is buffering, but trust me, everything is being recorded so you can actually watch the recording. But if you can see me right now, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up if you can see me and hear me. And then we jump right in on where to place the best stop loss when you are trading stocks. Now, this does not apply to options again. For options, tomorrow we have the options class. It's absolutely free. We'll spend probably 45 minutes to an hour, so maybe a little bit more in the usual coffee with Marcus. Um, but today I want to talk about how to calculate a stop loss for trading stocks. Okay, uh, so if you can see me and you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. And if it is buffering for you, ugh, it will be fine. <laughs> I mean, the internet will be back. Yes, everybody stay safe, wash hands, keep the social distancing. Let's uh, let's kick this virus in the butt. Okay, good to hear that everybody is good. So let's get started. Let me come to you uh, full camera and then we jump on the screen. So right now I want to show you how to calculate the best stop loss if you are trading stocks. And I want to show you very specific examples. Uh, we'll look at examples like Tesla will look at examples like Apple. And this is for you if you are trading. Now, trading is different than investing. When trading, you're actively placing a stop loss to limit your losses and a profit target where you take profits. Today, we're going to focus on how to limit your loss because we want to make sure that you're not losing your shirt when trading. So let's get started. So first of all, when we talk about Placing a stop loss, there's something important that you need to keep in mind. So let me share my handy dandy iPad here that I can take some notes. So there is two things that you need to keep in mind when we talk about a stop loss. So this is why I should actually draw a really nice line here. Let me see if I can do this. Eh, I think we'll be fine with uh, with just a regular line. There we go. It's almost a straight line. <laughs> okay, good. So uh, the first thing, actually, let me draw another line here so that we see it right here on the top. And if I'm get, if my picture is getting in the way, I promise that I'll remove myself from the equation here. So first of all, we are looking at a stop loss per trade, right? So if you're entering a trade, you need to limit your risk. And this is where we are looking at the 2% rule. So what does the 2% rule mean? The 2% rule means never risk more than 2% of your account on any given trade. So let's say that you have a $10,000 account. So when you have a $10,000 account, your risk should be 2% of $10,000, which is $200. So never risk more than $200 of your account on any given trade. And here's why. Now, let's say that you have, uh, for example, five losses. You have five losses. Actually, you know what? Let's be even more conservative and say that you have 10 losses in a row, which can happen. So if you do 10 times $200, you lose. Oops. <clears throat> ha. There we go. Jesus, why is this going over here? I think I need to hold the pen slightly differently. So let me um, rearrange my notebook here. There we go. You lose 
$2,000. Now, of course, this is not nice, but you still have $8,000 left. So you're, you're still alive. You can still trade, right? You started with a $10,000 account. You have 10 losses in a row, which by the way, is quite an accomplishment because if you have 10 loss in a row, you might want to revisit your strategy and go back on a simulator for a little bit. But you see, this is the key when limiting your losses, you're still alive. You only lost $2,000 and you can still trade and make back the money that you lost. So is this making sense so far? Because if it is, do me a favor and click on like really quick, because this way I know if I'm going too fast or if I'm going at the right pace here. And if you have any questions, as always, leave a comment and I'll answer your questions right here uh, or in a comment, depending on when you leave it. Okay, so never risk more than 2% on any given trade. However, here is the deal. Now the question is, how much should you risk per share that you're trading, okay? This is an important distinguish, uh, you need to distinguish between these two because let me just use uh, Tesla as an example. So Tesla right now is trading at $550. So when I'm talking about having a stop loss of $200, the 2% 2 rule per trade, does this mean that you should apply a $200 stop loss to Tesla. So meaning that if Tesla goes down to $350 that you're selling it, no, this is not what it means. So when we calculate the best stop loss per share, I like to use a concept that is called the average daily range. And I'm going to show you in a moment on the chart what it means. The average daily range, I like to look back over the past seven days and I want to know how much did a particular stock move on average, right, over the past seven days. So let's actually jump right on the charts and let me show you while rearranging my little notebook here what I mean by this. So we are using Tesla as an example. So here I have a chart of Tesla and uh, Right now, as of April 7th, Tesla is trading at $548, so almost at $550. Let me actually bring this in here. There we go. This way we see it a little bit better. Now, here is what I would like to look at. I, I personally like to calculate the average daily range. It's slightly different than the average true range, but for our example here, we can use the average true range. Here's what you do. You click on the F and you bring up the ATR, the average true range. Now, when you do, see, it'll uh, show it right here on the screen. And I wanna make sure that I customize it for just a moment. So I am going to disappear from the screen for just a moment. I'm clicking here on the ATR on the little gear icon and I'm changing the length to seven and for the smoothing, I don't use an RMA, I'm using an SMA. This is a simple moving average. <clears throat> All right, so this is where you can see right now, Tesla on average, you see it right here in the bottom. Let me come back to you on the screen. This way uh, I can talk to you directly. You see that Tesla on average is moving with $45 per day. You see today alone, compared to yesterday, it's up $32. So this means that you need to place a stop loss of at least $45 when you're swing trading stocks. Otherwise, you will be stopped out way too, uh, too quickly. So you're looking at the average daily range here. So let's go back to our example, Tesla, and I'm bringing back my handy dandy notebook here so that you see exactly what I mean. So for Tesla here, we're talking about, this is uh, $45. So this is $45 per share, meaning that if Tesla goes down from 550 to 505, this is when you would get rid of it. This is when you say, I was wrong, okay? It's going in the wrong direction. You're buying Tesla because you want Tesla to go up. If it is moving against you, get out, right? I mean, get out before it gets worse. So, however, if we want to risk 
$45 per share. And now we also want to overall risk $200 per one trade, per this Tesla trade. How many shares are we allowed to trade? You get the idea? We take the $200 and now divide it by 45. So this means that we can trade four shares of Tesla because four times 45 means that we are risking $180 overall on this trade. Is this making sense thus far? We'll do another example in just a moment, but let me know if this is making sense. And if it does, give me a thumbs up really quick. And by the way, if this is your first time here on this channel and you're enjoying it thus far, click on the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell because this will you get notified whenever I release a new video. But is this making sense? If it does, give me a quick thumbs up, like this video here so that I know that we can move on to the next example because I want to show you another example, for example, with Apple, why not? Let's do Apple. Okay, so <clears throat> seems that you all agree so far, so good. So now we want to do the same thing and we're doing it for Apple. So let me just uh, erase a few things here on my handy dandy notebook. So right now, ugh, erase a little bit more, but you get the idea. So now we want to look at Apple. A A. So let's see where is Apple trading right now. So um, I'm going to switch back to the charts here in a moment. I'm just quickly looking it up. So Apple right now is trading at $262. Let's just say $260 as I'm recording it. So let's take a look at the charts. And again, what we want to do here is look at the ATR, the average true range, or I like to use the average daily range, but it's not built into trading view. So therefore we use the average true range. And you see it is $11, quite different from Tesla where it was $35. You see, when you have a stock that is more volatile, you have to apply a larger stop loss. And here we can apply a smaller stop loss. So. <clears throat> Let's go back to our notepad so that we can uh, write it down here. So the average daily range, average daily range for Apple is right now $11.82. So let's just say $12. So we have to give the stock at least $12. Otherwise, we're getting stopped out too quickly. But on the other hand, if you're buying it and it doesn't immediately move up, get out right away. This makes sense. Good. So since we have the average daily range of uh, of $12 and now again, we have to see overall on this trade, we want to risk $200. So how do we calculate our overall risk? So our over uh, or how many shares? Let's do this. So how many shares should we trade of Apple? See, previously in the example of Tesla, we were trading four shares. And here we're taking the $200 that we want to risk overall and divide it by 12. Now, let me quickly do this. Uh, 200 divided by 12 is, uh, is around 16 shares. Okay. So this means here, instead of trading four shares, we are trading 16 shares. What does it mean? Because 16 shares times $12 per share that we are risking, let me do the quick math here. So um, 16 times 12 would be $192 that we risk, which is in line with the overall $200 that we want to risk. So. It is very important, and let me come back to you here just full screen. It is very important that you use the 2% rule for the overall risk per trade, and then you use the average daily range to calculate how much you should risk per share. So in our example here, Apple, see if Apple moves down from 260, if it moves down by $12 to 248, you get out of it because it means that you were wrong. <laughs> okay. Now, when you apply these two key principles, 
This is how you preserve your trading account. Because with the 2% rule, as you can see here on the left hand side, <clears throat> This is how we make sure that we are not wiping out our account on a single trade. And now the key question is, how much should you risk per share? And this depends really on the stock that you're trading. Stocks that are more volatile like Tesla, they require a larger stop loss. And stocks that are a little bit less volatile like Apple right now, they require a smaller stop loss. All right. Hope this helps and if you find this helpful, click on like, subscribe to this channel and also I have more videos for you that I have here on the screen here right now. So if you enjoyed this video, just click on any of the videos here uh, on the left or on the right and I'll see you in the next video. All right, and you guys already know why I did this uh, because we'll use this little video, uh, take a clip out of it and Asia will edit it so that we have it as a standalone video. Now. Let me ask you this. What well, was this helpful? Because this was one of the key questions that I uh, received here um, of how to use the average daily range for the stop loss or the 2% rule. Again, this here is for trading stocks. Uh, but let me just see if this has been helpful. Okay, so I'm looking at your questions right now. We'll bring in a few of your questions here to make sure that uh, this is making sense and this is helpful because this is what this is all about this show. I mean, I'm doing it here because first of all, I'm having a blast hanging out with you, having a coffee together, right? And you know my favorite mug, trade what you see, not what you think. And especially with calculating the stop loss this way, you don't have an opinion. See, if Apple moves against you by $12, you get out. This is the main difference between a trader and an investor. An investor gets married to its position. A trader, <laughs> a trader doesn't care, right? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It happens. Anyhow, this is why I always say, trade what you see, not what you think. By the way, somebody asked if we do have these mugs for left-handed people, and I found out yesterday, we do. If you're left-handed, you can go to our store, order one of these mugs. I believe they're like $9 or $9.50, something like this. That's what the company is charging. Trust me, I don't make a single cent on these mugs. I'm giving it to you at the same price. So if you enjoy these, go to rockwelltrading.com slash store and you can buy it there. Well, let's take a look at the questions that you have here. So if you're trading, uh, if you're joining us live here, uh, I can see your questions right now. If you're watching the recording, leave a question in the comments box or even better, go to askmarcus.com because let me just show it to you one more time, the way it works is when you go to askmarcus.com, you see all the questions that other people ask. And right now there's 221 questions. If there's a question that is of interest for you, you can just upvote it. You can hit like on the questions and you see, I am answering these questions from top to bottom. The more people like a question, the quicker I'll answer it. So right now we say, check, this is done here. And uh, did, I, uh, did I check the right one? I hope so. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm just refreshing it. You know what? I'll worry about it later because right now I want to make sure that I am answering your questions. Huh. There we go. This one is answered right now. And uh, tomorrow we will talk about options. So this is one of the questions that uh, Jesus has here. If an option is a strike price and you're assigned the stock, you can just sell it right away, basically not lose. Jose, uh, Jesus and 15 others of you wanted to know it, so we'll tackle this tomorrow. Okay, let me come back to you, take a look at the question. <clears throat> All right, so see a bunch of you just saying hi, really appreciate it. And uh, let me slide my monitor over here a little bit <clears throat> this way. It's easier for me and to also look in the camera while answering the questions here. So um, just want to make sure that what I've shown you here has helped. Uh, Sandra has a little trouble seeing me. Okay, maybe click on full screen and maybe it is the buffering. So all of this is being recorded and will be available as soon as we're done with the live show here. Um, now, VE Trader, there we go. Or Vet Rider, that's, there we go. Um, ADR or ATR, I just wanted to confirm. So I usually like to use the ADR, the average daily range, but it involves some custom programming, which I did for my software, the PowerX Optimizer. Most charting software systems use the ATR. Um, you see, the ATR is close enough, so you can use the ATR. Um, 
I, I personally, for my trading, use the ADR, but if you're using TradingView, you would have to custom program it. Uh, I haven't done it because, again, it's already programmed into the software that I personally use, the PowerX Optimizer, uh, in order to find my trades and place my trades. So um, I use the ADR, average daily range, but you can use the ATR uh, if this helps. <clears throat> Good. Um, Mark said, I asked this question about the stop loss and the 2% rule because from your materials and videos, you mentioned both. Yes, absolutely. And now you know why, because one is for the right here, amount per trade, and the other one is calculating it per share. So it's very important. Yes, I'm using both and you have to use both together. And now hopefully you know how exactly you use these two together. Okay, good. Uh, Derek is uh, giving an excellent uh, advice. If YouTube is choppy, try wop, uh, watching it in a web browser. Again, it's probably right now whether stay in shelter or stay in place or place in shelter order is in effect. Everybody um, is staying at home watching videos, I guess. Okay, good. Um, so Mark already asked this. We got it. <laughs> Stephanie, handy dandy notebook. Anyone else familiar with Dora the Explorer? Honestly, I never watched Dora the Explorer and uh, my kids have never watched Dora the Explorer. So if it is from there, great. I thought I had it from somewhere else. No idea. By the way, do you like this notebook? Is this helpful when I'm drawing stuff on the screen? Just give me some feedback because if you like this, I'll do more of these drawings. And uh, if you don't like it, I can prepare slides. I just thought it would be a little bit more interactive. That's why I've done it. Okay. Good. There you go. Uh, okay, Bonnie, uh, what percent willing to lose in a volatile market? Never risk more than 2% of your account on any given trade. It's a really good rule of thumb. Many famous traders are using it. It's not only me. I learned it from other traders. So um, it is a good rule. Do that. All right. No problem. Uh, so great question. Uh, Ziad is asking the average daily range. Is it for swing trading or day trading? So here we're using it for swing trading. So on daily charts, if you're going down to an intraday chart, I would use probably 10 to 20 percent of the average daily range. See if, if for example, Apple moves twelve dollars when day trading, you don't want to use the whole twelve dollars as a stop loss, right? You want to use maybe a dollar twenty to a dollar eighty. So for day trading, you just adjust it accordingly. But the same principle: a stock that is more volatile and moves more, this is where you would lose, use a larger stop loss. And a stock that is less volatile, you use a smaller stop loss. Make sense? All right, let's have a sip of coffee. Okay. So, uh, Jacobus. I hope that I pronounce it correctly. Selling small quantities might be a problem. Yes, this is why when you have a small account, you should stick to stocks that are cheaper. So you should stick to stocks that are $250 or less, maybe even $150 or less, because this way you cannot only trade, uh, what did we have here, 16 shares or four shares. This way you can trade more shares. So stick to less volatile stocks or chalk stocks that are cheaper. Um, there's plenty of stocks that are in the 100 to 150 dollar range, so you can trade those. Great comment, really appreciate it. Okay, so uh, Diane is asking the 10 period ATR. No, I'm using a seven day, seven day period ATR on a daily chart. Okay, um, Tom is asking an excellent question. What numbers and information will you use to determine the market has returned to normal? Here is what I'm looking at. I am actually looking at the VIX. The VIX is the volatility index telling me how volatile the markets are right now. And if you look uh, back at the volatility index, you see that usually it is between 10 and 20. Right now we are at 45. So as long as we are above 30, we are definitely in volatile market conditions. Once the VIX drops below 30, we're probably back to normal market conditions. And this is when I will start trading stocks and options again, according to the PowerX strategy. Right now, as you know, I'm mainly selling puts and I explain this tomorrow in the session that we have right here on YouTube Live. But um, Tom, is this helpful? 
So I'm looking at the VIX, the volatility index, which is also called the fear factor. And I want to see that the fear factor goes below 30 again. All right. Great question. <laughs> okay. John, is that it for today? Well, I'll answer more questions and we can take a look at individual stocks if you want to. Um, but yeah, the, the learning lesson mainly for today is about the how to calculate the best stop loss. Okay. Um, is the LADR a good buy? Oh, is LADR a good buy? Um, you see, let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take a look at LADR, whatever that stock is. I don't think I've heard of it, but uh, let's take a look at this. Ladder Capital Corporation. Um, oh, dear Lord. Okay. So you see the sector right now is finance, rental, and leasing. I would stay away from anything that has some, anything to do with real estate right now. And here's why. Let me come back to you. So right now, uh, as you know, we have a record unemployment. Um, we had 3.2 million people filing for unemployment the first week uh, that we had these super high numbers reported. Last week, it was an additional 6.6 .6 million, so approximately 10 million. For this week, we are expecting another 3, 4, 5 million. So many people have lost their jobs, so they're struggling to pay rent. Some of these finance companies and lending companies, they're over leveraged and they might have a hard time. See, I own apartment complexes. As of right now, I was able to collect 80% of the rent that I usually get. Now, 80% is not good, but it's better than many of these guys can do. So honestly, I would stay away right now from anything that is related to real estate investment trusts, finance companies, leasing companies here. So uh, not quite sure because e even if they are leasing cars, let's say, I mean, some people might not be able to make their car payments. Think about it. If you've just lost your job, right? I mean, what, what do you do? You you cannot immediately move home to your parents. So you, you got to find a way to probably call these people, call it, call your landlord, call your leasing company and say, you know what? I'm having a problem. I won't be able to make the payments here. So I would stay away from this. <clears throat> but great question. Great question. OK. All right. Jeff says you want a left handed mug. Yes. I think you were the one who asked the other day, so I was looking it up for you. Uh, okay, Ahmad is asking, what if you bought 32 shares of Apple? Well, there's two ways. Either you have to reduce your stop loss or you have to increase. Uh, let me just go back here. See, uh, if you would uh, buy 32 shares, it means that you're either risking $400 on any given trade. Uh, so this means that you're now risking 4% of your account or instead of $12, you would have to risk only $6. Then if you're trading 32 shares, uh, you can, uh, you will still have the overall risk at 2%. Now, again, the, these are guidelines. I mean, um, Ahmad, you're an adult. You can do whatever you want. Based on my experience, the 2% rule helps traders like myself and others to stay out of trouble. Because see, if you have a $10,000 account and you have a losing trade where you only lose $200, no big deal, right? I mean, this is where you're still alive in the water. Um, most traders have a problem because they are letting a loss get too big. And uh, in the beginning, this is what happened to me. I had a position for $6,000 and then suddenly it decreased to $2,000. At this point, I mean, you start praying and say, please let this kind of go around, right? let the stock go up. So, I mean, feel free to use a larger stop loss or a larger risk of your account. But this is how traders usually uh, blow out their accounts. Okay. Hope that helps, Ahmad. And again, I'm just uh, sharing what works for me. You do whatever works for you because if it works, it works. And uh, this is what I've been doing for, oh, geez, probably 20 years right now. And uh, this has helped me to grow my account substantially. <laughs> okay. You know what? We should do this. Robert says martini with Marcus instead of coffee with Marcus. Now we are talking. And who knows? what I really have in this cup here. Might be coffee, might be a martini. <laughs> Who knows? Great question. Um, so Rosemary, should you actually put a stop loss in a trade or just have to be your indicator to get out? Uh, I always, always, always put a stop loss in the market. We talked about indicators the other day. Indicators are always lagging. So I would not wait until the indicator tells me to go out. I actually have three different exits. One, the stop loss. Second one, the profit target. And the third one, 
if the indicator tells me to get out. So if either one of these three is hit, I'm using it. Whatever gets hit first. If the stop loss is hit first, I'm out of there. If the profit target is hit, I'm out of there. If the indicators tell me that the trend is uh, about to end, I'm out of there. Is this making sense? Great question. Good. Uh, like me is asking, how should we calculate the stop when trading indices in exactly the same way? In exactly the same way. Let me show you. For example, let's say you're trading what the SPY. Um, Vladimir, what are you usually trading? What are you trading? Uh, let's say it's the SPY. Let me go back to the screen here. Let's talk about an index, the SPY. See, so that's mirroring the uh, the S and P 500, and right now it's at 265. Average daily range is around 11. So you're using the same here, and you're calculating um, 11, 265. Minus 11, uh, this would be if it moves down to 254. Okay, so exactly the same way. There we go. And I'm coming back to you. All right. Um, how can you place two orders at the same time? E-Trade Perform doesn't allow it. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. It is called a so-called bracket order. Um, I will show you how to place a bracket order on interactive brokers uh, probably towards the end of the week. That's the platform that I use. And uh, doing this will be fairly easy probably for you to figure out how to do it on E-Trade. Again, it's so-called bracket order and uh, should be available there. Okay. Um, in a trading account, do you always have to keep a minimum balance of 25,000 that cannot be used for trading? No, that is not true. First of all, the $25,000 rule is the day trading pattern rule. Can talk about it another day but it basically means if you are day trading stocks only day trading stocks i believe also options i'll look it up um anyhow that's when you need to have a minimum of twenty five thousand dollars in there however when you're day trading binary options or when you're day trading futures you do not need this and when you're swing trading meaning that you buy the stock one day and then sell it another day this does not apply. It is only applying to day trading, and I believe it, the rule is if you place more uh, three or more, so this means four day trades, meaning that you open and close a position within one day, and you do this within a week, then you follow under the day trading pattern rule, and then you need to have $25,000. But no, Victor, I mean, this is not true. You do not need to have $25,000 in your account that you cannot use. Even when you're day trading, you can use the $25,000. Just the, the value of all your positions cannot drop below $25,000. Anyhow, hope this helps. <clears throat> okay, um, so Zed is asking, if Tesla costs $550, how can I risk $200? Um, well, again, this is where it's very important that you understand there's the capital needed. You're absolutely right. If you're buying five shares of Tesla, you need at least $2,000 in your account. But of these $2,000, you would only risk a fraction of it. You would never risk the whole $2,000, right? And uh, I, I know that we went through it rather quickly, so feel free to watch the recording. And again, Asia will edit this video out, probably add some magic uh, annotations to make it even easier to understand. And as soon as this video is up, I'll shoot you an email uh, so that you know that this is available. And by the way, you also want to make sure that you're subscribing to this channel here if you haven't done so, because this way YouTube will inform you whenever I release a new video. Make sure that you hit the little notification bell so that you get notified. All right. Is this helpful all thus far? We'll answer a few more questions because I see that there's some great questions coming in here. Uh, so we want to take another probably five to seven minutes to answer as many of your questions as possible. But if you find this helpful, do me a favor. Click on click the like button because this way I know what kind of videos you like and I'll do more of those. And if you have any questions for me, again, go to askmarcus.com, answer your question or look at any of the other questions that are there. And if you say, oh my gosh, I want to know this too, you can upvote it by giving it a thumbs up this way. I know exactly what to prepare for for the next one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Claire says the notebook is good. Kathy says, I love the notebook. Thanks for the feedback. Okay, uh, Yasko says, I took a three days option seminar two to three years ago. I learned it, but um, but I scarred to do it. Um, I'm not quite sure, Yasko, what you're asking. Um, you know what? Why don't you come to the free option class that I do tomorrow? Why, why don't you start there? 
and see if this helps. This way you don't have to invest anything. So tomorrow I'm, I'm walking through the options 101. This is perfect for you if you're new to trading options or uh, if you need a refresher. So I think it would be perfect for you. Okay. So um, Trivia is asking, or oh, Triva, how long do you hold for swing trading? See, usually five to 20 days. That is my sweet spot. So five to 20 days. And again, I have three exit, my profit target, my stop loss. And also when my indicators say that we are about to um, change the trend, right? So uh, these are the three things that I'm looking for. And uh, usually it is between five to 20 days. Uh, Vita is asking what percent to take profit? Twice the stop loss. Okay, so if you are right here risking $12, if you see that Apple is going up $24, take profits, right? So if it moves from 260 to 200 and uh, what is it, 84, get out of there. Don't worry, if it goes higher, you can always re-enter. But I take my profits quickly and here's why. And you might wanna write this down. Nobody ever got broke taking profits. Nobody ever got broke taking profits. Isn't this the truth? The reason why people lose money in trading is because they are too greedy and they don't take money off the table. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Roger says, looking forward to the options trading tomorrow. So do I. Okay. So the Killer Capricorn PowerX Optimizer, you look at the stock performance for a year, even though only you're in a stock for five to 20 days. Is that to see if the stock is profitable? Yeah, yeah. because I wanna see how, would, how much money would I have made if I had traded this one particular stock according to the PowerX strategy over the past year, right? So this means that I probably would have taken 12 trades, 14 trades, 16 trades, right? And I wanna see out of these trades, are most of these trades profitable and am I overall making money? That's why I'm looking back. And yes, since I'm only holding a trade for five to 20 days, I see a performance over the past 12 to 16, sometimes 20 trades. That's why I'm doing it. But you see, I know that some of you said, can you do a live demo? Uh, here it is, of PowerX Optimizer. And uh, I believe we do it sometime later this week. Today's Tuesday, tomorrow on Wednesday, we do the options class. So I would say probably maybe Thursday and Friday, I'm going to show you exactly how this works, how I do it, why I'm looking at the data. And if you have any questions, of course, you can ask me. All right. Great question. The killer Capricorn. <clears throat> All right, uh, John. Hey, thank you. Thank you uh, for being part of the family. Look forward to working with you. Okay. Um, so, Herman is asking CCL a goodbye, Carnival Cruise. I don't know. I know that the Saudis uh, took an 8% stake in this, but I would stay away from the cruise lines. I think the cruise lines will be hurt for many months. I mean, think about yourself. Let's say that all these travel ban gets lifted. Let's say in, in June, we go back to our normal lives. Would you go on a cruise in June or July? Would you go on a cruise this year? Or would you say, not quite sure with all this corona and maybe there's somebody who is still infected and I can get infected or the whole ship can get infected. I think there's a lot of fear right now. And I don't think that people would actually go on a cruise for the remainder of the year. So just my opinion, right? Uh, this is why I think that the cruise lines are in trouble, that they're in free fall and they're burning through a lot of cash every single day, same as the airlines. All right. Okay, Warren says, uh, nice job explaining the 2% rule. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, now we're talking about things. It must be Martini in there. Uh, there's a few guesses here. So Diane thinks it is Margarita. Maybe it is Margarita. Um, Tom says, maybe it is a gin martini. Maybe it is a gin martini. Who knows? And maybe it is just good plain old coffee. <laughs> okay. All right. So Victor says, if you only have $6,000 to trade, then it would be limited by the PDT rule, the pattern day trader, only if you're day trading. So you can swing trade. You can swing trade options. Uh, tomorrow when we talk about options, I'll show you how to trade options in such a way that you're not subject to the pattern day trader rule. I show you how to trade options with a rather small account. So $6,000 is plenty to start trading options, 
right? So we'll talk about this. Okay. All right, uh, Chase, that's, uh, so that's the 2% stop applies to option trades. No, this is for stocks only. We'll talk about options tomorrow. So make sure that uh, you are going to rockwelltrading.com slash options to register. Again, it's free. And I only ask though that I can send you an email and I might ask for your phone number because then I can also send you a text message so that you don't forget it. If you want YouTube to inform you, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, hit the little notification button. This way YouTube will pop up probably on your phone and say, hey, Marcus is live. And then we can do the live class tomorrow. Okay, um, Catherine says, uh, oh, I never answer you. Really, Catherine, you know how to contact me. Um, so is it possible to trade options in an IRA? <coughs> Buying options, yes. Selling options, probably not. But buying options, yes, you can. Um, the good news is, just ask your broker, who is your IRA with? Is it with Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or Schwab? Or, I mean, somebody has your IRA, right? You can simply ask them, hey, what can I do? Can I buy options? Can I sell options? Can I buy stocks? Can I sell stocks? Usually you cannot sell stocks and therefore I think that you cannot sell options. Check with your broker they will know. All right. Fantastic. Uh, Bonnie, could you recommend what we need to study before tomorrow's class? Nothing. Oh, <coughs> no, I took a sip. I have a frog in my throat. <coughs> we got to finish it here. I'm sorry. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I'll be back tomorrow. You don't have to study ever anything. I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry about this. Oh dear Lord. <coughs> this is what happens when you put martini in the cup. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Take care, everybody.